Social interactions are an integral part of many animal societies, including non-human primates. A common aspect of successful social interchange is the ability of individuals to cooperatively interact in order to reach mutually favorable goals such as obtaining food and building social bonds. The ability to successfully interact is also fundamental to many human endeavors and plays a central role in many interpersonal, economic and political decisions. At the same time, the inability to interact successfully with other individuals can often lead to damaging consequences. A second cardinal feature of successful social interchange is our ability to anticipate or predict the hidden intentions or state of mind of others. This is often based on our past experience with another individual and if accurate can lead to positive interactions, but if not, they can also lead to embarrassing consequences. How such computations are made within the brain at the neuronal level, however, has remained poorly understood. Hi, my name is uh, Zeev Williams. I'm an associate professor at Harvard Medical School and uh, MGH and uh, faculty at the Harvard and MIT Health Science and Technology program. Hi, my name is Karen Harouche. I'm an instructor at Harvard Medical School and a visiting scientist at Janilia Research Campus. From the time I started my postdoctoral work at Zeev Williams Lab, we've been very interested in understanding how complex social interactions are computed both in animals and humans. In this video, we'll discuss some of our work presented in this month's issue of Cell that describes how certain neurons mediate cooperative social interchange in primates and how predictions of another's yet unknown and unobservable intentions or planned actions are encoded at the neuronal level. In our study, we trained multiple pairs of adult rhesus macaques to perform an iterated prisoner's dilemma game that allowed them to cooperate with the other or defect over successive trials. Here, the two monkeys sat side by side facing a screen. The monkeys were not able to see each other's decisions until they both completed their selections. Cooperation and defection were defined here operationally based on the consequent outcome of the two monkeys' joint decisions. That is, if both monkeys jointly chose to cooperate, they would each receive the highest mutual reward, in this case four drops of juice. However, if one chose to cooperate but the other defected, the monkey that defected would receive the highest individual reward while the monkey that was willing to cooperate received the least possible amount. Finally, if neither monkey cooperated and both decided to defect, they would both receive a lower reward than if they both chose to cooperate, in this case only two drops of juice. Based on these joint interactions, we could therefore dissociate information encoded by neurons as they related to one's own decisions, the other's yet unknown concurrent decisions, past responses, and expected reward. As the primates performed the task, were recorded from single neurons in the anterior cingulate cortex, a part of the medial frontal lobe thought to play a role in social disorders such as autism as well as decision-making and other higher cognitive functions. We first focused on the monkey's own decisions to cooperate or defect and found a subgroup of neurons in the cingulate that selectively encoded only the monkey's own decisions while encoding little or no information about other features of the task or their interaction with the other. These neurons, therefore, appear to be focused on computing the monkey's own upcoming decisions. A critical component of this game is the ability to actively anticipate the other's covert intentions and upcoming decisions. Therefore, we next search for neurons that may encode information about what the other was intending on doing when the other's decision was still unknown. Surprisingly, we find that many neurons encoded the other's decisions when they were yet unknown. However, they encoded no information about the monkey's own planned or performed selections. Moreover, these cells did not encode information about self or other reward. Unlike mirror neurons that reflect another's known or observable actions, these neurons appear to be largely dedicated to predicting the opponent yet unknown decisions or covert intentions. Remarkably, these cells constituted the majority of task-responsive neurons in the cingulate. Next, we examine how the activity of these other predictive neurons was influenced by the monkey's social interaction with the other. We therefore repeated the same task as before, but now had the monkeys placed in separate rooms. We find that under these conditions, other predictive neurons were significantly less prevalent in the cingulate 
while the neurons that encoded the monkey's own selections became more common. Finally, given these neuronal observations, we wanted to find out whether disrupting neural activity in this area affected the monkey's interactions. We therefore used a very low current transient stimulation similar to what is currently clinically used for deep brain stimulation for treating disorders such as depression or Parkinson's disease. What we found is that transient inhibition of neurons in the anterior cingulate selectively reduced cooperation by the monkeys as well as reciprocation of the other's cooperation. Taken together, these findings suggest that the cingulate plays an important role in social behavior and identify unique cells in the cingulate necessary for predicting another's covert intentions or state of mind. Our ultimate hope is that these findings will provide new insight into how to treat certain behavioral disorders such as autism and uh, antisocial personality which are commonly affected by social difficulty with interactions.